Trace zone hands on. So we'll create a basic example of the secure and non secure application. So, first step, we will activate the trace zone on our target and we will configure the address of the watermark. Then we will create a basic trace zone project and assign the GPIO of the LED to the secure world. Then, in a non secure world application, on a push button event, we call a non secure callable procedure to toggle the LED. And the last step will be to deactivate the trace zone on our target. As first step, I would like to activate the trust zone feature on my target. I will use a Nucleo L552ZE. Okay, so let's connect it. And can detect it some cube programmer. And let's check the option byte. Here in the user configuration. We want to be in the dual bank mode and we will put one bank in the secure world, the other one in the non-secure world. So for this, we will activate the zone first. Or let's just apply this. So now the trust zone is activated and you can see that the secure area now appears and we can configure it. By default, it's fully secure. So the first bank is secure, and the second bank is secure also. So for our hands-on, I propose to use the first bank as a secure one, and this one says that it's not secure at all. So here we will program. And I apply it. So, doing this, the second bank is considered as non-secure. So now, we are configured with the trust zone enabled. Um, disconnect, and now I will launch STM32 Qubitair. So, let's create now the project for our L5 board. So, as previously, we will use the Nucleo L552 ZD. The purpose will be to put the LED in the secure area, okay, so the GPIO will configure it at owner of the secure, and we will have the push button that will be in the non-secure part, and we will call a non-secure callable gateway to toggle the pin. Okay, let's start a new project. Cue the next one. So I won't use the board selector for the L5. Frankly speaking, today I prefer to use just the MCU and configure the GPIO for the LED and the push button. So it was the L5, five, two, and it was the Q1, uh, not the Q, sorry, ZE, ZE. So let's take this one. And trust zone, trust zone test. Okay. So during the initialization, I propose to have a look in the user manual of the board. It's a user manual of uh, my Nucleo board, and I would like to check what are the GPIO for the button and for the LED. So let's check the button. So the user button will be on P313, okay? And about the LED, so just on top, let's use the first one. It will be PA5. Okay, so I will just configure the both GPIO on my target. So, PT13. And this one will be as input. This is my button. Then I will put the lead, PA5. This one 
will be other output. Okay, now I want to say who is owner of which part. For the PA, so I just have here in the system GPIO, PA5, so PA5 will be the LED, and I want that this pin context was a Cortex M33 secure, okay? For the push button, I want this one to be owned by the non-secure code. I would say that's it. Here we can see we've got many information, the NVIC for the non-secure and the secure. You've got the secures, Cystic, many news, but for the moment, let's keep this. So we'll generate the code. So as you can see here, when I created such kind of project, it generated two projects, the non-secure and the secure one. They are closely linked which one, okay? The memory map, uh, I will say, fixed for them. For the secure one, we can have a look in the linker script. So it was the secure, the memory RAM is here, and you can see that the base address is in the secure alias. You remember this? So really in the secure alias, it's where we will use the secure uh, code. For the non-secure linker script, the base address should be the second bank of my flash, and it will use the non-secure alias, okay? So what do we have in the code generated? Let's have a look in the test secure because it was this one that will start first. If I go in the main, so we've got the vector table address for the non-secure part because we need to switch from one vector table to the other one. Then we've got the main, we've got the GTZC in it, the GPIO, and then we will call the non-secure in it. So that means we will switch to the non-secure world. To do that, we will relocate the vector table and we'll set the main stack pointer and we just jump to the other application. Okay, everything has been done by STM32 Qubiter for you. We could have a look in the GPIO, and as you can see here, we've configured the GPIO A in the secure world, and we are already configured the attribute of the push button as non-secure. So on that turn, the GPIO A will be only accessible from the secure part, and the push button will be assigned to the non-secure world. Okay, we can also see that there is some secure, non-secure callable dot C. It's where you can put all the non-secure callable function, okay? So that means you can add an entry here, and it's what we will do with our toggle, the toggle LED. Then we've got our trust zone application. So it just executed, initialize, or finish to initialize the push button. We can have a look to this. Sorry. Oh, I haven't compiled yet, so we don't manage to find it, but here we've got the function. And, okay, it was just an input. So I propose we started to patch the code. So, from the secure part, what I propose is to see if we are well started or not. So first, let's switch on the, the LED and switch off it after a delay. So, just after the GPIO in it. Toggle the pin, PA5. And it was pin 5. So this will switch on the light. Then we will wait one second, for example. Then we will switch off the LED. So after we will jump to the non-secure in it. But what I would like to do is to create 
non-secure callable services. So here I just need to add this flag. And I will call this secure toggle pin without any argument. Um, what we will do here? GPIO. Hmm, sorry for this. GPIO toggle pin again. And it was GPIO A pin 5. Okay, so now I've declared here a secure NAC.C function implementation. I propose to declare also the prototype. So let's switch to the header file. Open. So exactly the same prototype. That's it. So now I will say my secure application is ready. Okay, we will just switch on the light, waiting one second, switch off the light, then we will switch to the non-secure application. Then we put in place the secure services, which allow to toggle the pin. So now let's modify the non-secure application. So here, what we want to do is just to check if the push button is pressed, so if GPIU read pin and it was PC pin 13 and if this one is equal to that means the button is pressed so if the button is pressed then I propose that to call the secure services we define, which is secure to your pin. Okay, let's put a shell delay. Or just have to avoid to have to check the pin again okay um, that's it okay I propose we start and try to compile okay so first let's compile the non-secure application and in fact it compiled non-secure and the secure one so I think everything is ready. I'll double check. Okay, so compilation is okay. Now I propose to modify the configuration of the debugging secure script to load the non-secure and the secure binary at the same time. So to do this, we should go in the debug configuration of the secure application. On the startup, we can see that we have the test secure help that is load and download. We will add also the non-secure parts. So in debug for the moment, file system we will perform the download and the load of the symbol. So I had it. Here we should first flash non-secure part, then the secure part, and after it should launch everything as debug. Let's try this. So the flashing was okay. I propose as a first test just to check, I would say, what are the status on the board. So if I push the reset button, the light switch on during one second, then switch off. 
can if I push the blue button. So functionality is here. Okay, let's have a better look with the debugger now. So now I propose we go step by step inside the code. So we are in the main and secure code, main secure code, sorry. So as you can see, we are just toggling the lead. So let's go first break, sorry, and let's reset. So I'm in the secure code, we are booting. As you can see the addresses, we are on the secure alias address. And we can see the status of the core, or I will say if we are in secure or unsecure state. Here we are in secure state. So step by step, initialize the GTZC. The GPIO, we can just go inside. As you can see, we configure the pin 5 and we change the attribute of the pin C13, which corresponding to the button. And we say, okay, this GPIO will be part of the non-secure world. Then we continue. Then we've got the toggling pin at the beginning, just to show that it starts properly. And then we just boot, or I will say we jump in the non-secure area. So if I go in my main.c of my non-secure area, I will set a breakpoint here and just continue. Now I'm breaking in the main.c of my non-secure application. The CPU state has changed and you can see the range of address that are now in the non-secure alias. Okay, let's put a breakpoint when we try to call or the secure gate, sorry. So non-secure callable area, to be clear. So I just resume and push the blue button on my target. Then I'm just stop in the secure toggle pin. So here we are branching to non-secure area address. So I propose now to step in at the instruction level, that's mean in the debugger. So I instruction stepping mode now. And here we'll go instruction by instruction. So I step into, as you can see, we are still, I would say in the non-secure world. So non-secure is still again. And I step into, okay. Here you can see a branching and we are switching to secure alias address. And the first instruction was this secure gate. So that's really, we are switching from non-secure to secure world. And you can see that the CPU state changed from non-secure to secure. Okay, so now I will put a breakpoint in the GPIO function. Oh, let's try to go just step by step. So here we are jumping. So I move the PC and I'm branching to the GPIO toggle pin. So here we are inside the secure world. If I continue, what I would like to, to show you now is how we leave this. So I will step over. So I'm still at instruction level, then I'm branching. Okay, no, move. Okay, so we prepared everything, I think. I'm looking to base NS. Okay, this is the instructions to leave the secure world to the unsecure world. And now I'm come back from the non-secure. Okay, so I will show you, I will say the switching from the secure and the non-secure world. What could be interesting to see also is maybe the register. In the general register, here we've got the non-secures, non-secure, the secure, secure PSP and MSP. Um, you can see that everything is, I would say, duplicated from the secure and the non-secure world. Okay, so now I really go, i show you how you can debug the both application with the STM32QBDL. 
that's it for the debugging parts, I would say. So let's remove, terminate and remove. Last thing that I would like to show you, maybe, it's where the SIU is set. You remember the secure attribute unit? It's something that should be, I would say, a setting at the beginning of the code. Let's have a look. We are in the secure part because the CPU started in this code, so it's where the SIU configuration will be done for sure. So if I go in the core, I think about the system stm 32 l 5c Here we've got the definition of somewhere system init, which is called at the beginning. And you can see there is a trust zone SIU setup. Okay, if I go to the declaration, we can see there is test here done regarding which are and the value that are taken from this configuration file that should be on the top. If I will remember, okay, CMCs, device, ST, HTML5, include. And here we've got a partition underscore. Let's open this one. And it's a depending on which chip you are using. So for us, it was this one. Let's open it. And you can find the define, where you've got the define of the different region on the SIU. So max region is eight. We know this by definition. And then we define for the region zero that is activated, the start address, the end address, and if it's non-secure or secure callable. So remember by default, it will be secure. Uh, so if you put it in one, this region become non-secure callable. And we've got the region one, where we've got the address in the non-secure alias, and say this region is the non-secure. So here we declare the portion of the flash that will be uh, seen as non-secure. Then we've got the same things for the SRAM. So here to declare it, this portion as non-secure, then a region three, this is a portion of a register device, if I well remember and so on and so on. So this configuration parameters are in this file, okay? To a zone secure core in partition. So you can also hit the there. So partition L5 and 5 and 5, okay? This is the other location, sorry, I, I missed this. So now we've seen that it's called cool at the beginning, the configuration is here. So if you need to change the default mapping that is in the sources, generated by STMM32 cube IDE, you can do it just there. The last thing that we need to do before closing completely the hands-on is to remove the trust zone uh, on our targets. I want to show you this aspect because it's not so easy to do it, okay? So first, we still have our software running on our target. So if I push a reset button, the light switch on during one second, and if I push the blue button, so everything is working. So now I can connect the targets. So it's down. Here we've got the option by trust zone enable. And to be able to remove this one, we need to do a regression from RDP0 to RDP1. Okay, so let's do this. But remember what happened when we switch to RDP1? any debug interface open, the flash can't be accessed anymore, okay? You have to take care because you can't attach when you are in the secure world. So the only way is to have some code that allow you to jump to the unsecure part, okay? And then you will manage to connect, not to access to the flash, just manage to connect. So let's do this. So first we change to RDP1. We apply and see, take care. Enable RDP when trust zone is active. If no secure code running, it may prevent disable the trust zone on RDP. In our case, we've got the code that's running because I know that here I'm in the non-secure world. So we am connected, so I can't uh, show you, but we have seen just before. So I will activate it. Are you sure? You may last forever. Um, there is the possibility, I would say, to use the bootloader, maybe to connect and to recover your board. But 
In our case, I want just to use this one. So we are sure we've got code that's running. So let's switch to the AGP level one. So now we say I can connect. So I will disconnect. First, I will check my code is still running. I put the reset. Oh, I have, unfortunately, um, when I've got the ST-Link connected, by default, there is a debugging access at the beginning. And this is due to the fact that there is a mass storage that is coming from the target. So we need to remove one of those jumpers here to remove the debugging link, okay? So let's remove those both jumper, then unpower the board, power it again. Okay, so if I push the reset now, it switch on, okay? And then I'm in the unsecure world, okay? So I've got my code running on the unsecure world, so now I should be able to connect. So I have to put again my jumpers. Now the debugging link can start, so I will connect in a hot plug, not with the connect under reset. Okay, so we are able to read. So I think the error is due to the fact it can't access the flash for sure. But now we can modify the option byte, okay? So what we want to do, we want to do a regression. So that means we will switch from RDP level zero, or uh, level one to RDP level zero. And we want to remove the trust zone. So it was in the user configuration and we want to remove it, okay? I close it again. You can see we still have secure area. Let's apply it. It was done successfully. We can see that secure area definition have been removed, so we have no more trust zone enabled. We can check it, sorry, not poor level, but user configuration. Trust zone is not enabled anymore. If we check, we can read the flash memory, but we have done a full regression, so no more code is available on our target.